my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my drumroll, drumroll, 2023 favorites. Where does the time go? It literally feels like I graduated college like yesterday. But today we're going to be talking about um, clothes to music to just a bunch of miscellaneous things. Let's get into it. So starting off with clothes, I love, 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 love these. I've talked about them in a previous video if you if you've been here before. <laughs> They're my heady Bauer jeans. They are low waisted. This is what they look like. You see the full idea of them. I'll probably maybe insert a picture or a video. And I just feel like they pair really well with I'm going for like a casual outfit, maybe a more like going out, but still want to be like fun and flirty kind of outfit. I feel like it keeps things just like nice and casual and fun while also I can wear them with like boots, sneakers, things like that. I love when you have a piece of clothing for a while that like you look at it and you're like, oh, maybe I'm not really like in love with it. It's okay. It's not really doing much for me. And then it's to like grow on you. You love the way it like looks on you and these are them. They're also super soft. That was my stomach, if you guys heard. They stretch a little bit. Yeah, they just stretch a little bit. And they're just very comfortable. And so I feel like when I'm running out for errands, going somewhere, going out with like people, these are the jeans I usually gravitate towards. And I just love the way they sit and they feel on me. When it comes to more clothes, I have a puffer jacket. Actually, let me go get it. I'm back. Here it is. I pushed this jacket about a couple months ago and it's just like a nice little puffer jacket i've had like little jackets like this before that kind of like crop at your waist but i've never had like a padded puffer one like this at least like very recently and so i really just like the bright blue color too i find that like outside of denim or like hoodies i really don't like wear blue a lot especially like a brighter blue like this it's a brand arizona jean co I've never worn them before but i have now and i really like it i don't think i have any pictures of this jacket too like pictures of myself in this jacket too so what you guys get oh i'm forgetting one of my most important things this is my hello kitty shirt i didn't get this this year i got this in 2021 actually which feels crazy to me i got it at a little thrift like flea market and this is what it looks like i just think it's really cute oh my god not me now just seeing a stain on it but i think like when i pair it with like little denim shorts or denim skirts that i usually love to and then like either my docks or like a pair of like sneakers i think that's when it looks the best Now on to more like just like miscellaneous things. If you see right there, my little clock, sun rising clock, I guess you would call it. I'm going to find like a picture and like put it here. And like when it wakes you up in the morning, it's like mimicking the sun rising. One time I woke up like before my alarm went off because I wanted to see it in action and it is really nice, especially when it's not as sunny during the morning. It's more like a gloomy day. It's really nice. It turned off right now because I had to like fiddle. You can see like the wire going down. I just had to fiddle with the wires back there and unplug it. But usually it'll tell like the time where the little brown part is and then this part will be yellow if you tap it there's like different settings it can be like a light yellow warm yellow a brighter yellow things like that and then if you change it to another setting it can be like different colors like red blue green purple and then you can also set it on a mode where it just like goes into the color without you having to click it you can probably see it in another one of my videos like when i'm watching my life with the vulture boys last weekend and that was the light that was like shining on my piece more miscellaneous things this is my mother's old coach my mother how formal my, my mother mom's old coach purse that she lets me use when i'm like going out like on little events even i use this sometimes to run errands if i really just want to be like i don't need my lipstick my purse like my tiny purse and my phone i don't even think my phone really okay, i know my phone fits in here i just love it okay you can't you guys can't see but she's giving i love just like the little polka dots it's just very fun it goes with like any casual outfit i'm wearing if i want to dress up and wear like something a bit more like classy it goes with that too it just feels very timeless another miscellaneous thing my sony these are the sony headphones wh 1000 xm4 that's the one i have i have been using them like so much this year i thought when i first got them that it was going to be like i kept using my airpods and these were just going to be like one off when i feel like i wanted to like hear the music louder but they have like grown on me so much the noise canceling i think is like pretty great i know other people have said it's not to the capacity that they wanted them to be i think as these are my first noise canceling headphones i personally find them pretty okay i know some people want noise canceling where you can completely not hear anything through it i didn't necessarily want that i just really wanted things to be like quieter if possible and also i was looking more so for like boosted like music and things like that and so like if people call my name in the house and i have my headphones on i can't really hear them like i could if i like turn down the volume but like there is like that muffledness other people have said with other over the head headphones which is also what kind of worried me that they run into like it hurting or like giving them headaches this personally never happens to me sometimes i do catch myself listening to my music too loud and i need to take a break and i'm like okay i do have a 
cosmetic. When it comes to like comfortability and things like that, I would personally recommend it. More miscellaneous things, there's that. <laughs> These are my little plushies that I've gotten like over the past year. I'm gonna show you the order I got them in. I got the avocado first, hey. <laughs> I don't really have names for them, I just call them, they're, they're like my babies. <laughs> and then this little slice of pizza that has like hearts on it. It was like a Valentine's Day special. I got this little waffle because look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> and then I got this little acorn i've never really had plushies before in terms of like ones that i sleep with on my bed the most is like this little flower pillow that i bought when i can i can't hold it when i went to college they're just so like lovable don't don't think i don't love you mr flower i do but these are like i just think they're very sweet my dct lip balm i've said this before in my last video where i was doing a bit of skincare but like i will recommend this to anybody who's maybe not anybody because i don't know every, everybody has different reactions to different things but if it, you're looking for just like a lip moisturizer especially when you put it on at night gives you like very smooth lips i feel like dct has been like the perfect thing for me this is this is it personally i feel like i still have like a bad habit of like biting my lips which is always going to like tear them and stuff like that but when it comes to like me wanting my lips to be like smooth moisturized this is it. Another thing, this is my E45 lotion. It's a moisturizing lotion, perfume free for dry and sensitive skin. You will come to know I have very dry, sensitive skin. Well, not very dry anymore, but like it definitely like on my face, I have like combination skin, sometimes dry, sometimes oily. When it comes to my body, I do suffer dry skin, which is then like contrasted with the fact that like I also like sweat a lot in my sleep. It's a whole thing, but I also grew up with eczema, so I've been like very used to like having sensitive skin, not really being able to like use lotions that have like perfumes and things like that. My eczema is pretty controlled now, but when I have like breakouts, I still have like a cream for it. But when it comes to just like daily use, I wanted something that didn't really have like scents or perfumes in it. This is the perfect thing. When it comes to makeup, if you know me, I'm like opening my little purse now. I am very much a lip girly. Like I love trying out different combinations, things like that. Oh my God, this is my makeup bag, not my lip purse here i am digging through it if i went through my lip purse i would find my huda beauty cream lipstick i'm gonna put a picture here but i really love it because i think it's the perfect it's like a not like a tan but like more like mauve base perfect color for like any kind of lip liner i personally love doing like darker lip combinations i'm still trying to get like more custom and used to like harder lip color combinations but i love doing like a dark lip especially for the fall and so that is like the perfect base for it i also feel like when my color combination on my lip is looking maybe like a little too bit too dark i want to like brighten it up a bit it's the perfect thing to like dab and like and then it like kind of really spruces it up when it comes to other products i love this juvia's place blush i've been looking for a blush that is just gonna last me a long time this year because like i've been using a more cream one before and it was fine but like i just felt like i needed something a bit brighter something that went on a bit more smoothly this one, this one, Juvia's Place Plus, as people will tell you, is like so pigmented, which I love. Um, you put a little dab, you put a little dab. Sometimes you can look a bit cloudish, but most of the time, 90% of the time, I feel like if you put it on correctly, and then also if you put like another layer of like, I have this kind of like matte foundation over it, it kind of looks like you're blushing from underneath. But now just like another miscellaneous thing that I really like. I'm not gonna pan to it because there's a bunch of clothes on it right now. But I have this like big chair that I put in the corner of my room that I bought earlier this year I love it. It's like a perfect chair to like honestly like doze off in curl up in when like I have all my outside clothes And I don't want to like sit on my bed. I sit in there perfect place to read It's surrounded by like these fairy lights Just like a perfect setup for like when I want to sit down and read a book It's a chair that belongs outside the one I bought but there are definitely ones that you can buy that are supposed to be inside but It works exactly the same. I just think the cushion is different for me Whereas like other people are like more um kind of like feathery and like plush mine is more i think it's like water resistant and so i just do a little blanket over it and i am perfectly fine now moving on to things like music while i don't dislike like a song growing on me when a song just sounds good on first listen i feel like there's nothing else like it and that is sugarcoat by natty for me this year this song when did this song come out i feel like during the summer i was literally listening to this song before i started like filming this video and i was like i have listened to this song like on repeat for months at this point and i was like why does it not sound old to me old in the sense of like sometimes i listen to songs and i'm like damn diva you need to stop listening to this because you're gonna be so burnt out by the time you want to listen to it again and then it's gonna just sound like oh diva you've heard this before but when it comes to this song it's just like it's fun it's fresh it's when this song first came out it wasn't on spotify it was on youtube and that's the version i like still listen to because i'm just like so accustomed to it everything about it is just like 
well produced. That's like gush about it too much or anything, but like I've known Natty from like her. I know she was on 16, the survival show that produced twice, but I didn't watch that. But I did watch Idol School and then she debuted as a solo artist. I know that happened. I don't dislike her solo music at all, but like in consideration to like Sugarcoat, it's just not topping it personally. This song, this song is like it. <laughs> in other music, I've been listening to Take It. I feel like I don't know when this song was trending on TikTok, I forget. But every time I listen to it, it just makes me feel like so nostalgic of not even that time when it was like trending on TikTok, but just of like a time in your life when you were just like riding in a car, the wind blowing through your hair, just things were good. Like everything about this song just feels very just like feel good if that makes sense. I just love the way it also builds up to the chorus each time. Like changes and choices they made for like the second verse and then lead up to the chorus again in the outro. I just really enjoy it all. I'm literally looking at my Spotify to be like, what do I play a lot? <laughs> I feel like this doesn't need to be said because like all of my, <laughs> in my head because I feel like when I'm on YouTube, I'm talking to my friends, I'm like, oh, they would already know this about me, but probably not because I'm like, oh, you guys are possibly new. Um, and thank you for being here. The Still Over album by Summer Walker. I think Summer Walker was nominated for a Grammy earlier this year, but not for any of her like her albums. She was nominated for like her EP, which personally I like a song on that EP. I'm not personally in love with it. And I just think it's a little bit surprising that like she wasn't nominated for Over It or Still Over It because the product, I, I don't know. Like I love when I can listen to an album like full way through and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not in love with like a song or two in between here, but like the whole, like the body of work as a whole is like so impressive. I feel like oftentimes I'll listen to albums, I mean oftentimes but sometimes I'll listen to albums and I'm like the way in which the songs are placed in the album I'm always like skipping around. Like when I listen to it again I'm always skipping around because I'm like the choices made here were interesting but I feel like when it comes to Summer Walker's albums whoever decides like the order they go in the production of them is just so I just love songs that have good replay value without feeling like they're getting super old and I feel like that's still over in particular. Over It also has like a very special place in my heart, but I think because I kind of missed the era of Over It, like when it was first released. I heard like her music on the radio, but I was like, didn't know who it was at the time. But when Still Over It came out, I was like tuned in by then. And so I just remember the first night I like listened to it and I was like, wow. Especially when Constant Bullshit came on, I said, oh, this is a hit. I remember when I was first listening to it, like I was like, okay, I like these songs, um, but I haven't like really fallen in love with one yet. And then that song came on and I said, Take me off. <laughs> I think my favorite song on the album is Reciprocate though. That is my personal favorite. Now I'm looking up the album to see like what are my top three on it. I feel like it's easier to honestly maybe point out the songs that I don't really like. I don't hate them or anything but like I personally am never gonna listen to them unless I'm just letting the album like go through itself. I don't like that right there. I'm sorry, I skip it every time. Not so much that I don't like it, because I like the more upbeat, like, upbeat songs on the album, like Extra Reason. It's like one of the more like fast paced songs on the album as opposed to like the other ones. But when we get to that right there, I'm just so like, hmm. I don't dislike screwing with Omarion, but it's not a song I also go like looking for. I feel like it's easier for this album to talk about the songs that I am not in love with as opposed to the ones I am because then I would just be going through the whole catalog. But yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of that right there, screwing. Like I'll listen to screwing, but like not as opposed to like a, like if Reciprocate came on or like Circus came on, like that's, that, that's getting a listen first. But yeah, those two. I think screwing in that right there, which is interesting because I now realize that they're like right back to back and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's why I always feel like the album when I'm listening to it goes straight from toxic to broken promises because I rarely listen to those two. But those are my- actually, you know what I also listened to a lot this year? Chunga's album. I feel like when it first came out, I was personally overwhelmed by how many songs were just on the album. I feel like as other people have said, but I decided to start listening to the b-sides on them recently and they're really good. I personally feel like this album should have been yeah, like it's really long. Now that I'm looking back at it again, and like I understand now, because if you have not heard what is going on with like Chunka's company, it's very shitty to say the least. Her old company. Was, and some of them were like promoted as like singles, and I think that's why I was surprised that the album was so long, because I was like, oh, Dream of You, Stay Tonight, and Bother Me are all on the same album. And it's Bother Me that I was listening to a lot this year. Just what a good song. I feel like because it's not promoted, it's very much like a B-side, it's not promoted like the other ones. I'd never really heard of it before. And then I came across this like video that was just, I think talking about something else but then like Bother Me was playing in the background and I was like what song is this and then I just fell in love. So that's that. Now going on to books. I say very subjectively I did not have a great reading year and I say that not because I didn't read a lot. I read a lot of fan fiction, <laughs> um, a lot of very good fan fiction but it was more so that I felt like there were so many times that I could have been like sitting down reading that I was like 
let's go on TikTok. <laughs> and I feel like I really just want to limit my screen time in the... Oh God, I can't stop coughing. <laughs> I kind of want to limit my screen time in the new year. I just feel like I spent too much time on my phone. I feel like I say this a lot, but I do want to take steps to be like, okay, Diva, like instead of going on TikTok again, why don't we sit down and read? And not even like forcing myself, but just like prioritizing like my different hobbies, if that makes sense. Of the books I read this year, my favorite one I feel like was Non-Negotiably Out on a Limb by Hannah Bowman Young. I just enjoyed everything about this book. It's about two people, Wen and Bo, who have a one night stand at a Halloween party. Wen discovers that she's pregnant later on. She is like, hey, I'm pregnant. He's like, I definitely want to be involved at this point we the audience can tell like they are both like they kind of have like feelings for each other but like to see it develop over the course of the book was just very very sweet i also really appreciated the conversations that were had about like pregnancy in the book one of the side characters wins best friend which i also love the way their friendship was depicted in this book one of my personal pet peeves is one female main characters in romance books not having any friends as somebody who is in their early 20s who's had a hard time making new friends i understand in that aspect but more often than not it's never because of that it's just like it feels like the book was like loath to write other people into their life like other than the other like like romantic person that they're gonna be with and then when sometimes when they do have friends the book tells us like oh they've been friends since like they were in like middle school and now they're like in their 30s and they act like they have like never talked before it's like either so formal or so like are you sure they've been friends for like decades this is all to say i was very happy about their friendship in the book because it just felt very natural it felt like everybody's friendship is different but i was like oh these people are friends and they're written as if they've been like lifelong friends which i appreciated back to the point i was trying to get at in the book it's briefly mentioned when tells the audience that like when's friend and her husband have made the choice like not to have kids and i was like oh like that's nice and i say that's nice because more often than not this could be just like the books i'm reading but i didn't realize how many times over if the woman doesn't want to have kids if she's can't have kids she's always framed as like this very she's usually the villain she's this very like shrewd cold like woman and like that's why she doesn't want to have kids but like or like the idea that like you can even be have a, an established like marriage and make the choice like not to have kids i just feel like i rarely read that in romance books personally if anybody has any other recommendations i want to hear it <laughs> give them to me and it was just like a breath of fresh air and i say that mostly because we don't even spend like too much time talking about that segment but we can see how much win's friend and her husband like love each other they're goofy they play around with each other he like adores her needless to say i really like how like win and bo's like relationship develops over the course of the book this also reminded me that like people could find this boring and i understand how like i personally didn't find the fact that like nothing crazy happens in the book i say crazy in the fact that like they have a one night stand that is personally i think like the biggest event like plot wise i've definitely seen critiques of people saying that they felt like nothing much happened in the book and i could definitely see that but i think i really maybe it was just like the time i read it at but i really enjoyed that just for the sake of like one i really dislike unnecessary third act breakups if the book doesn't need to have it it shouldn't have it you should find another way for something to keep the third act like going i don't want to spoil too much but i just really love the way that like win and Bo loved one another and the way over the course of the book we see them just kind of grow like more and more on one another even though you can tell that they really liked one another at the beginning i think just like with the effortless like banter and like humor and the way they just communicate with one another i just really enjoyed that i feel like i don't want to undersell this book as saying that like nothing happens in it but like i personally feel like the biggest event that like happens in the book is when they have the one night stand at the beginning and then over that it's just them getting to like know each other over the course of the book through like doctor's appointments and things like that and it's just very sweet it's just very nice it can be exhaustive like when a book feels like it needs to throw like a bunch of wrenches into the plot just to keep things like exciting and interesting don't get me wrong it can be exciting and interesting but sometimes it can be like i feel like this is just happening for the sake of the plot and storytelling wise this doesn't make a lot of sense which i appreciated did not happen in this book but as i was saying before because i got off track in the epilogue when we get to that point it's noted that Wynn's friend and her husband still don't have kids which was just like even when my friend read it because i recommended it to her she was like oh yeah that was nice mostly because again when the woman doesn't have children or she doesn't want them more than often than not in the epilogue the idea is like she has children or like she's changed her mind some over the course of the book even though sometimes like vehemently they have said like they don't want to everybody in that will to change their own mind about wanting children not having children that is not the issue at all but more so i just feel like what it kind of implies more often than not that like as a woman or in a relationship like you can't ha be happy and like you less you have kids but that's not implied here at all we're so happy for win because she's pregnant and like bow and win and her are like having this family and then we're so happy for like 
I can't remember her name. I think it's I think it's Sarah, but I don't want to misremember it. I don't have the time to look it up. We're so happy for them as a couple because they love each other and that's just the way it works for them. Here's a picture of the journal page I made for it. And if you look on my Instagram, you can also see a video I posted of a reel showing the process of making it. So shameless plug, go check that out. <laughs> In terms of TV, I can't say I had like that many TV shows I was either looking forward to to return or new ones that I watched that I really fell in love with. But I feel like a couple of them, the Harley Quinn series I usually enjoy and I did this time too. But this last season I think was, or this most recent one, I feel like in my opinion was noticeably weaker than the other ones. Just in terms like I feel like things didn't really ramp up until the end and that was interesting pacing. It wasn't like awful or anything, it was still good television, it was still funny. But I'm looking forward to seeing like what happens next season. One show that I just came across randomly that did surprise me with how much I liked it was Such Brave Girls, which is about two sisters and their mother and they're kind of like very dysfunctional but also like functional like little family. After I watched it because I enjoyed it so much i just looked up like background information about it and one of the sisters wrote the show and actually the two sisters in the show are actually like real life sisters which i'm like okay maybe that's why the dynamic felt so like like even when they were very much like harshly poking fun at one another i was like oh okay sometimes a show can feel like it's trying too hard in this degree but i didn't feel like this one was in terms of like humor and like making sure like you knew the characters were 20 somethings but it felt very obvious to me in like a good way that i was like oh there were 20 somethings in the writing room the writing as such was very well done because of that i don't know why it keeps reminding me of this but it was almost like humor wise like darker dairy girls which i need to watch the last season of i've been putting it off because i literally don't want the show to end but i probably should but yeah i would recommend such brave girls I really enjoyed it and I really wish that there was like another season. Once I finished the first season, I was like, please let me just tell me that this was like an old show that like slipped under my radar and there's like four of them. There's only one. I hope it gets renewed. In terms of jewelry, it's kind of faded now. I think this is my favorite necklace. I got it during the summer. As you can kind of see the back, it's like fading, but it has a little S on it. I've always wanted like a little like nameplate necklace like this just for like one letter. I have a nameplate one that my mom got me for my birthday when I was 16, which I really adore. The nameplate one that I got for my 16th birthday is like for my first name and then this is for like my last name and then one last thing i'm messing <laughs> this locket that my mom had and it says or i found it i can't remember for the life of me but i think it was hers and it says love i just think it's very sweet <laughs> there was no chain on it that's why i can't remember where i like found it from but there was no chain it was just like this little like open and shut locket and my mom found like a chain and i was able to make it a necklace i really like it just because it feels very feels very, feels very cutesy it feels very feels very just, i'm just a girl i keep telling myself that i'm going to put a picture of my little dog princess who passed away about two years ago it feels not that long ago but she passed away the january of my senior year and I love and miss her so much. I can just feel myself getting somber as I talk about it, but I want to put a little picture of her in here and maybe like a little picture if I have of us together. But I just fear that like every time I open it or if anybody like asks me about it, I feel like I'm the encapsulation of like laughing through the pain right now, but I will literally start crying. But isn't what that quote said that like grieving somebody is like the best form of love because it shows that like you never really stopped loving them. So I ended that on a somber note, but those are my 20, oh, wow, I ended that on a sad note, but those are my 2023 favorites. I'm not at all to be excluded. My camera that I'm now shooting on, I can't show it of course because I'm shooting on the camera. I have a Sony, Sony ZV-1, um, which I really like so far. I've only had it for like, like a month. I bought this as, for myself as like a birthday present. So far, I feel like I'm really just still learning like a lot of the properties about it, like how to maneuver it, how to like best like lighting, things like that. I feel like the one thing about it is the battery dies fairly fast, but that is something that like people said before I bought it. And so I was prepared and I got extra batteries, which most people say you should when you get this camera. Maybe in the future, I'll do a video about like the necessities that I feel like you should have when you have like this kind of camera. We'll see. Let me know if you want to see it. <laughs> but that's it. Those are my 2023 favorites or I feel like I kind of cheated because some of these things are things I got in previous years and now I'm only just like now using them. But I feel like isn't that the great thing about getting older, being able to see the greatness and things maybe like you didn't see before. Sorry, as I said that, I was like, oh my god, Diva, that's so wise. <laughs> Obviously, I cracked myself up. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for watching and looking forward to my 2024 favorites because I feel like by the time I'm making another video like this, I'll be saying the same shtick of like, oh my god, like, I just felt like it was 2023. <laughs>